Good morning from Lille. Welcome to our online meeting on how to host an online meeting. My name is Irma and I work for the Interreg Europe Secretariat. Our project partners know that we as organization do many activities online, small meetings, informative seminars, trainings, question and answer sessions, networking, large scale events. And it's a while indeed, we wanted to share our experience with you. At the time we thought about this topic, we could not expect that it will be so relevant in today's context, when we have to follow strict limitations for physical meetings. But still, we need to have social contacts, there is a need for exchange, so virtual environment is a great alternative. Two weeks ago, when we launched the registration to our webinar, we did not know that we organizers will be delivering you this online meeting from different, two different countries, France and Ireland, from three different towns, Lille, Dunkirk and Kilkenny, and seven different homes. Indeed, it's a challenge we as the organizers had to take on board. So now you know that today I'm not alone with you and you will meet all my colleagues from communication team. Mia and Julie will be giving presentations. Julie, uh, Petra and Josephine are moderating the chat. Eilish and Ilaria from project and finance teams are also here to support us. So the message for you is do not hesitate to submit your questions to us on the topic of this webinar. And you can do it using, um, using the, the box, uh, questions box on the right hand side of your screen. What about you? We know that all, all more than 400 people registered to this webinar from 28 different countries. And I can see that over 300 are with us today, motivated to learn about the online, uh, online events. Uh, so uh, we also know that most of the participants are Interreg Europe project partners because we uh, designed this webinar specially for them. But we go beyond and we know that today with us, there are also uh, some uh, organizations, some people representing organizations, they are discovering Interreg Europe for the first time. So special welcome for all of you and we hope that content of this webinar will be useful. I'm really curious uh, to know how experienced you are with the online events. And for this, we have prepared a poll. And uh, on your screen now, you will see a question uh, to answer. The question sounds as following. What experience you have with the online events? And here we propose four different answers. You can choose that we have no experience at all. You can choose that only as a participant you have um, experience with the online meetings. Indeed, uh, probably if you join the meeting today, you are ready, are ready to answer the second, uh, the, to choose the second answer. But the third answer is for the ones if you have ever hosted an online meeting as an organizer. And the fourth answer, also as an organizer of big online events is for the ones who have ever done in their life big uh, webinars, big online meetings, which require even more effort in terms of organization and technical equipment. So please choose one of the answers and uh, submit it. I can see that the answers are slowly coming. So you, I think you know very well what is your experience with the online meetings. And I guess we are already ready to see the results. Let's have a look to the results on the screen. And we can see that only 7% of you have no experience. 60% of you have experience um, with, the, with the online events as the participant. 30% uh, of you already organized a meeting and 2% of you organized a big uh, event online. It's great that we have different experiences, that all of you have different, different experiences. For the ones that organized an online meeting and for the ones who, um, who indeed uh, have experience, I have something to offer, but you will have to wait till the end of this webinar to learn what is this offer about. 
Uh, great. I would also like to thank you for all of you who submitted questions in advance because it helped us to uh, structure this webinar uh, accordingly. So in the next one hour, uh, together with me and my colleagues, we will cover the following aspects. We will talk what is an online meeting, uh, what an online meeting could be in your project, what different roles you need to think of when you are organizing an online event. We will also give you some tips on how to be a good moderator and presenter. And we also will provide you some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, advice on how to make uh, nice presentations and ensure interactions. And at the very end of this webinar, we will cover about, we will talk about uh, the tools uh, you could uh, use to deliver your meetings online. Please note that in this webinar, we will not tackle questions related to your project implementation and all the specific situation we have due to the coronavirus spread. For example, if you need to reschedule your project activities or there are some other challenges in terms of your project implementation, you shall address such questions directly to your policy and finance officer at the Joint Secretariat. So uh, please do not hesitate uh, and do, do that. Uh, immediately once you have uh, such questions. So now with the short introduction, I think we are ready to dive into the first topic and I am very glad to present my colleague Julie who will talk about the online meeting and in the context, in the context of your project activities. By the way, the presentations and the recording of this webinar will be made available on our website. So um, don't worry, you don't need to take a detailed note. You can always, you will be always, it will be always possible to rewatch uh, this webinar. Julie, the floor is yours. Tell us Thanks, what Eva. is an online meeting? Well, Irma, uh, thank you for giving me the floor and um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Julie, as my colleague Irma has just said, and I basically manage the digital communications for the comm team. So an online meeting is really just a presentation that's delivered through the internet. It's as simple as that. Now, um, usually this will come with some interactions like polls or quizzes, just like you've already done. Um, and it might be recorded or it might be done live like we are now. So you'll hear people talking about uh, an online meeting or a webinar. Uh, let's explore the difference a little bit further. So a webinar is where there's one person speaking and a bunch of people listening. So really like the scenario we're in now. I am talking and hopefully you're listening. Um, whereas an online meeting, there's a connection between all the speakers, between everyone and everyone can speak. Let's go into that just a little deeper, shall we? So an online meeting has, it's usually for smaller groups. So it can be anywhere from two people to 25, 50 people, really depends. And you will use the appropriate tool that will allow you uh, to, to speak to the number of people you need to, to do. And my colleague, me at the end will, go through a, a few different tools to help you. Um, it's What's important to remember about the online meeting is that all the participants have the same rights. Generally, they have the same rights. So what does that mean? That means that they can all speak at the same time. So the microphones are basically turned on all the time unless people turn them off. Um, people can share their screen with you. They can share what's on their computer screen so you can see what they're looking at. You can work on documents together. Um, they can decide to turn their cameras on and off. So, so we have this image of you know, five or six different webcams and we're all there waving with our microphones. Um, so again, that image. And also there are so, even some tools that allow you to work on documents and files together at the same time. So it's a collaborative effort. Um, and if there are five of you, then that's quite flexible. But if there are 25 of you, it can get quite chaotic. So in order to prevent that chaos, we've got some top tips to give you. One is you want to keep this meeting short. So unlike a physical meeting where we've all been to those that last half a day, a full day, people sit around the table, they talk, these meetings should be short. 
maybe about an hour. Um, the reason for that is, can you imagine wearing these things for over an hour, your ears start to hurt, you're tired of sitting down, you want to move around, you, your attendees, they start to, to fidget, they get tired, you lose, they lose focus. So really do try and keep it down to about an hour. Now, again, in a physical meeting, you'd be using a PowerPoint presentation um, and you'd be talking. Um, but again, on an online meeting, that's not maybe the best way to deliver your content. So you do want to think about uh, uh, just be a little bit more creative. Maybe you do um, a recording. So, for example, if you're an innovation project and you uh, want to talk about a robotic arm, uh, maybe do a little recording of that arm and show it to the online meeting so that people know what you're talking about. There are lots of online collaborative tools where you can mind map together, brainstorm together. Um, so these are different things that you might consider in a one hour online meeting. Um, so what's important in the non to make your, uh, you need to make your online meeting organized, efficient and short. So actually in this case, just like a physical meeting, you do need to plan an agenda. You do need to allow for um, a time scale. So how long are you going to speak about item A? How long are you going to speak about item B? So do set that uh, in a in a context. And then also you want to assign responsibilities to your different attendees. So who's uh, is John going to talk about um, the robotic arm and Sarah going to talk about uh, you know the the take the meeting notes who's going to have responsibility for what it's important to set that before you start also another important thing about online meetings is set yourself some rules um, about how the meeting is going to go how are you going to interact with um, your attendees online because again just like a physical meeting if there's five of you and all five of you have your webcams turned on all five of you have your microphones turned on and you speak whenever you need to, that's that's okay. You know, you, you might get a bit of overlap, but generally people muddle, muddle through. If there's 25 of you, 25 of you trying to speak at the same time, this might get a bit noisy and chaotic. So do set some ground rules. Um, are people going to be allowed to speak freely? Or is there someone who's going to be on the side turning microphones on and off so that, and, and perhaps a chair assigning the role uh, to who's allowed to speak? Um, do we want, do you want to be able to see your colleagues or not? Is there flexibility? You know, some people don't want to have their webcams on. Sometimes people don't have a webcam. Um, and also another thing to consider is if you're not speaking, do you want your microphone turned on or do you want it turned off? Uh, some people might not realize, but it, when you're in an online meeting and your microphone is turned on, even if you're not speaking, if you start to type on your keyboard, people can hear that. So that might be a little bit distracting. So these are things that you need to think about and there are no right or wrong answer here. It's really just about your team and how big your meeting's going to be. What's important is that you set these rules from the beginning and you adhere to them. So what about webinars? How are they different? Well, uh, webinars are usually for larger groups. So today we have 388 of you watching me. It's quite nerve wracking. Um, and it can be even larger than that. Um, and because it's so big, you really need a small team of people to organize this. You can't really just manage it yourself unless you're Superman or Superwoman or something like that. Um, so Irma mentioned that, you know, Petra is, and Josephine are behind the scenes. So is Eilish and Elaria, they're answering questions. Um, Mia is going to pre be presenting and Irma um, has been moderating um, the event so far. So, you know, so you need a small team of people to help you do this. But the crucial thing about a webinar that makes it different from an online meeting is the audience. You. You are hopefully actively listening uh, to me speaking. So you're not interacting with me from visually or uh, audio. You're just at this point listening, but you can interact uh, with the chat and you can also engage in polls and online quizzes. 
Again, just like in an online meeting, it's important to uh, assign roles and responsibilities to your team before you start the web uh, the webinar. Now, this isn't just about saying Petra is going to be the uh, background organizer, Josephine is going to answer the chat, uh, Mia is going to present, Irma is going to moderate, Eilish and Ilaria are going to answer project questions. It goes deeper than that. It's even in down to the little details. Who's going to change the slides? Is it going to be the presenter? Is it going to be the people managing the online tool? Who's going to turn the cameras, the webcams on and off? At what point are you going to do that? How is it going to flow? Um, who's going to, are you going to share your computer screen? Who's going to do that? And who's going to be answering the questions? So, you know, today, for example, our small team met uh, at 9.30 to discuss the final details, but we also met yesterday for an hour just to discuss these little details. It's important to meet with your colleagues and assign roles and responsibilities. Now, there are also uh, larger online events, and 2% of you, I believe, said that you have some experience in that. And these are bigger than, uh, they're definitely bigger than online meetings, and they're definitely bigger than, they can be bigger than webinars as well. Um, so they will require also a larger team of people to manage. Now, we've done a few of these. Um, we did one last year in Brussels where we had our annual event. It was a physical event. We were in Brussels. We had uh, people coming and sitting on chairs and listening to presentations and participating in all sorts of activities. And parallel to that, we hired a team of external experts to help us and they put on an online show. So obviously we streamed uh, the, the, the presentations that were going on on stage, but while we had breaks, uh, we had some online content just for the people watching. So interviews, videos, quizzes, um, all sorts of stuff. Um, so these are much bigger. And then you can also do it a freestanding online event as well, which we did in 2018. 2018? Yeah, 2018. Um, again, for our, on, our annual event. Um, and so basically, we had the physical event on one day and the annual event on the other. And again, we did lots of interviews and specific online content. Now, the team of external help experts helped us make sure that the sound and the visual quality was good, as well as the moderation. Um, the, uh, there's also an audience for these online events and they're also um, asking questions and engaging in polls and obviously your online event uh, online audience is key um, for these events usually participation isn't limited so you can reach 500 600 a thousand people it really just depends on how good you are at communicating um, things to remember is that obviously this is very very uh, heavy on bandwidth and at a time when um, networking companies like Vodaf uh, all these internet companies are uh, struggling with bandwidth connection, um, you know, keep that in mind. It, it might, you might, you do need to be ready for technical problems um, if they occur. So, and it's quite a lot of work. So, but it's important to know that these types of events exist. So how can you apply uh, these techniques to your current project? Just quickly. Um, so if you're doing online meetings, you can use that for your project steering groups or stakeholder meetings or peer reviews. Um, you can see the Interreg team there um, having its own online meeting. We regularly meet uh, three or four times a week. Um, again, keep it short, have an agenda, set goals and responsibilities goals and rules and responsibilities. For webinars, um, I try to say to be a little bit more creative. Don't think of the webinar as just a static uh, video. So me speaking to you, you can also do it as recordings. So Facebook Live or Twitter Live. It's um, really about you know one person speaking with an audience watching. 
So if you're, do, if you're used to doing study visits where people come and, for example, they take a tour of a heritage site or a natural park, or perhaps um, they go and see that robotic arm in, your, uh, in a factory, um, maybe do a recording of that arm or uh, to do, you know, take your phone. I mean, these things are wonderful little tools these days. Just take your phone, do a recording of take the, the footpath across the natural park and narrate what you want your audience to hear. Um, these are trying times. Some of us can't even leave our house. Uh, so not everyone is going to be able to do this. But if you are one of the lucky ones who can go outside, um, then you know, take advantage of it, be creative, um, and you know, do the best you can. And if you do have to cancel any events, then contact your policy officer and your finance officer. Um, every single one of you is in a different situation. Um, so we are dealing with these questions uh, case by case basis. Right, so um, I think now is time for questions. Uh, Irma, do, you, do we have any questions from the audience? Thank you, Julie, for the presentation. Indeed, we have few questions. It's Lars and Anemic. Uh, they both are asking and wondering, uh, is it possible and recommended to have parallel sessions in webinars? Um, what do you mean by parallel sessions? As in, you would have two webinars at, going at once? Yes. I think that would be quite challenging. So um, I would try and limit it to uh, one session at a time. Obviously, you could be highly skilled. Um, so if you are, then that's great. But these these webinars they're not uh, they're not to be taken lightly. They you know they do take time to prepare and they take a lot of coordination. So reduce your stress. Host one at a time. Yeah, indeed, uh, we as Interreg Europe, maybe you remember, Julie, we had uh, a bigger event, but uh, definitely it was, uh, we, we had to, to prepare ourselves uh, much more. So we had uh, an, an event uh, and we broadcasted uh, like uh, it lively. And uh, during this event afterwards, we had uh, several discussion rooms where people could afterwards meet and discuss uh, their topics on the project development. So all this is possible. Uh, but for sure, then you need to choose the right tools, by the way. You also need to understand that in some cases, like if you use something, some basic tool as we have, for example, now we are on go to, uh, to webinars, it would not be possible to have to, to run it in parallel. So it's, I think always uh, it depends and probably Julie you would agree with you on the objective of your meeting and also yeah. on the tools you use. But probably our advice would be to simplify it to to maximum i think as more simple it is as better yeah great uh and then there is a, another question related to the technical things we will talk about it a bit later but i think this question we can uh, we can take it now uh, on board uh it's albert uh who is who is asking he saw that we wear uh, headsets and he is just wondering is it uh, important that everyone is with a headset or why indeed we we need it? <laughs> well, um, that's a great question. Um, it's not necessarily important that everyone uh, is wearing a headset. The reason I chose to wear my headset is because um, I'm in my house. Uh, I haven't tested the audio in my house. I don't know what the echo is like. Um, and so I was a bit nervous uh, that you wouldn't be able to hear me without a proper microphone. So this is why I chose to wear my headset. Um, Irma, what about you? Is it for the same reasons? Yes, indeed, I know that for the webinar, the number one, it's not the video, it's the sound. As long as participants can hear you, they can be concentrated on what you're talking. So that's why myself, I'm also using the headset so that you could hear me well. Great, Julie. Thank you very much for your presentation, and I am really glad now to welcome uh, to welcome um, our colleague Mia, who will talk now uh, on how to define roles in an online event. And Mia, hello, Mia. Hello. 
Hello, Mia. And indeed, just before you start, I can say that we received already some questions for you. And when you talk about the roles, maybe you could answer to the question of the Jose. He is asking how many people should be involved uh, in the backstage to manage an online meeting. All right. So I That's think you will question. cover this during your presentation. Indeed, I will. Indeed, I will. Thank you, Irma, for that. And uh, thank you all for, for being on board with us. I've noticed that uh, since we started, we're now up to 400 participants. So welcome to those of you who joined a little bit later. Um, Julie just took us through uh, the basics of uh, webinars and online meetings. Let's dive a little bit deeper and, and start looking at the different roles. Um, how many people do you need? What do you need to do a session? Let's see. Um, one tip for everyone, whether you're on camera or behind the scenes, deliver your session with a smile. I mean, it's still an event. You're still dealing with people. You might not be able to see them, but they are there behind that little camera of yours. And uh, they will hear your smile, even if they don't see it. And especially if you are on a camera, you probably want to look at the speaker who is happy to do the session instead of looking bored. Um, Another important thing to keep in mind, and this goes into the question that Irma just raised, um, it is a team effort. Uh, just like you don't do an event all by yourself, same applies to online events, you need to have a team behind you. And there's indeed different roles. Julie touched up on this a little bit. Um, but let's look a little bit into those roles and what do you need to have to um, carry out a successful event. Um, you will need to have an organizer. This is the person or the team that is really in charge of the whole event. You will, of course, need to have your speakers and a presenter, a host or a moderator, if you will. And you will also need to have some panelists or some guest speakers. This is not mandatory. You can also do it with a single speaker, depending on your event. But anyway, speakers is kind of an important part. But note that these might or might not be the same person. Um, for online events, especially when it comes to interacting with your audience, you need a little bit of support for that as well. And this is where chat moderators come in handy. So this is why you see when you send your questions in, you have answers coming in as text as well. And uh, Petra and uh, Josephine are both sending messages as well to you, useful links, useful info, just to keep you on track of what is happening on your screens. And then when you get to bigger events, you really need to think about the technology you're using as well. And you need to make sure that you have all the equipment you need to run your session smoothly. And this is where a technical crew might come in handy. handy. So there's really, there's experts, there's specialists available to help you if you need any help. Um, and that's certainly an aspect that should not be ignored. Um, you see five different roles on the slide, but uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be five people. And especially for bigger events, it might even be more than that. So to answer the question, how many people you need to do an event, it depends on the event that you're doing. But please know that it is a team effort and you do need to have a team behind. Um, also, you need to think about your focus. What is really the core messages that you want to pass with your session? As Julie mentioned, I mean, you can't keep people engaged and, um, and active for a very long time. They start losing track, they start losing focus. So make sure you get your key messages right. Three is a pretty good number to go with. If you get three messages and you keep repeating them throughout your session, um, you can certainly hope that people take at least one or two of those, maybe even all three home with them. Now, if we go back to the roles, Let's look a little bit more in detail into what exactly these people do. So as I said, organizer is basically in charge of the whole show. Today, uh, Petra is kind of our executive producer in this team. So she's the one who, who makes sure that the session runs smoothly. We've been working together on uh, the key messages. We've uh, defined the agenda. We've been very strict about the timing, as Irma said. You have to know what happens and when, especially when you're working with uh, other speakers who might, might be joining in remotely. It's very important to keep everyone on track on what's happening and where you are with your session. You also need to pick the right speakers. That's what I mean when I say that the organizer doesn't have to be on screen, him or herself. You want to pick the speakers that really can pass the messages that you need to pass. And uh, when you plan your script and your timing, you really want to get down to details. Um, think about what your speakers are going to say. But again, don't forget that this is an event. The audience is an important part of it as well. So you want to count in time for interaction. 
plan slots for your Q and A's, leave time for some polls, encourage the participants to submit their questions, comments, ideas, and so on. There's many ways to do this, and we'll go into it a little bit later, but uh, keep all that in mind as you start planning the structure of your session. Then, for the presenter, this is today Irma. Irma is the first person you saw on the screen. She was the one who welcomes all the participants, opens the meeting, makes sure that everyone knows how the session works. I mean, online meetings are a little bit different from, uh, from in-person meetings, but you still need to start with a little bit of housekeeping to make sure that everyone understands how to work. Are, you, are your mics muted? Will you be able to hear people? Are you supposed to type your comments? Um, how can you participate? How does all that work? Somebody needs to pass that to the audience and to the participants. Um, also, if you're sharing any additional materials, maybe you're sharing the slides in advance, maybe you have some additional documents, some links and all that, presenter is the one that, again, gets the ball rolling and the session up and running. It's also very important to have a very good idea of how the session is going to run, because as with any type of event, not only online, but really any type of event, things rarely go according to your plan. So you have to be prepared for surprises. What are you going to do if internet connection is lost? What do you do if people can't hear you? What do you do if the audio is not working, if the video is not working? If your slides don't show, you need to have a plan B and you need to be prepared for that because there will always be something you don't expect. But it just takes a little bit of preparation. It's not too difficult. Um, also for the presenter, it's very important to really know the session in and out, practice and rehearse in advance, and uh, make sure that you're ready to go live when the camera starts rolling. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how to be your best when you are on camera. So we're going to give you some tips later on, but also pay attention to, especially if you are presenting on how you uh, how you do your makeup, how you do your hair, what kind of clothes you wear and all that, because even though content is the main part of the of the session and the message, you still want to make sure that the audience is at least not distracted by you when you get on, on screen and start um, running through your slides. Also, as I said in the beginning, deliver it with a smile, be positive, be energetic, make the people want to follow you through the session because it's hard, you're competing for their attention. There's all these tabs, all this information, maybe there's other people in the room, so it's very easy for them to get distracted, but it's up to you as a presenter to keep your audience online and in your session. Also, try to keep it short, short attention spans, be concise, be concrete, and get on with it. Now, you might have more speakers and you might have speakers who join in from outside of the session who might be calling in from other locations. Like Irma said in the beginning, we're doing this session now from many, many different locations and each of us is working remotely at the moment. Um, for your panelists, they have a slightly more specific role. They might come in as guest speakers or keynotes and they deliver their presentations, but they also need to be aware of the team behind and of their audience interaction. It's not like you come in and you do a presentation and you stare at the screen and you stare at your slides. If that's the way you want to do it, maybe a video would be enough. Um, if you're doing it in an event, make sure that you are also ready to take on the questions, uh, have some interaction with the audience, maybe check how they're doing. And, and by the way, I mean, we're running through quite a bit of content in this session. So anytime you have questions, just pass them through the questions box and we'll answer them. So don't worry about that. Um, in addition to the people you have on screen, there's also a very important role of the moderators taking care of the chat. The bigger the event, the more participants you have, the more questions and comments you're uh, bound to get. And you want to make sure that you're kind of equipped to take care of these. So your chat moderators are very important. Today we have four people in total working behind the scenes taking in your questions. We have um, people from all of the teams in our office. We have uh, Petra as the, as the organizer and we're passing links, we're answering questions, we're um, keeping the audience engaged and um, also somebody has to really filter those questions, see who is the best person to answer the questions that come in and, and sort of keep some sort of structure in what happens behind the scenes as the session is running. Um, those are the roles in a nutshell. Irma, I'm going to come back to you very quickly to check if we have any questions until now, because I know that we've been going through quite a bit of content and I just want to make sure that people are still following. So Irma, do we have any questions? 
Yes, Mia. Indeed, we had a question from Albert, and it's related to what you just talked about, uh, about the roles. He was wondering what indeed we do and uh, to ensure that all people who are presenting are ready on time, uh, they prepare the presentations, they are not late. Are there any tips you can give uh, for um, our uh, participants on how to manage this uh, efficiently? Yes, and this is where we are going to go next. Uh, preparation here is the key. As Julie also mentioned, I mean, it's not like you just call in and start with your presentation. No, you need to share the outline. You need to make sure that everyone understands not only what they are supposed to say, but the overall goal of the session. You need to do a little bit of briefing, and this applies both to the technical side as well as the content side. So check that the slides are aligned, check that the people know how much time they have, check that the sound is working, the audio is working. Um, and also testing and preparation and doing it jointly is important so that people feel comfortable doing it. Because it's true that when you're presenting to a camera, it's slightly different from being in front of a live audience because you're not getting that direct audience feedback. So um, kind of working with your team well, well in advance and getting ready for the session together is, is very important. Mm -hmm. um, Thank if you, we, Mia. Yeah. Yes. If we don't have any other questions, I do have some more tips on, on how to how to get ready and how to do how to be the best presenter you can be once you get on. So I, I would say we continue with this part of our our presentation and we're going to take some more questions afterwards. So just keep them coming. Irma is going to pick a few to discuss after these tips. Um, interaction and engagement i cannot stress this enough because i've been saying that it is still an event and you need to think about your audience because even though you are talking to your your camera and you might even be alone doing your presentation um, or you might be just with your team um, audience plays a key role in your session and it is your task as the uh, as the organizer presenter or speaker to kind of bring the audience in create that community feeling you might have noticed that when we started we were asking you to tell us where you joined us from and we've been passing those questions in you see that there's hundreds of people following us but if you take a look at the questions and comments in the chat box you'll also see where people are joining in from um, that's just one of the ways to do it there's more tips and tools that you can use but uh, but really don't forget your audience and build in time and opportunities for them to be part of your session because in the end that's what it's all about now how to do it many of the of the tools that you can use for for webinars or online events uh, offer you some some ways of doing this or you can also use external apps or, or solutions to kind of complement whichever platform you might be using um, polls and quizzes are quite a good good way to check if the audience is still on track or how they feel about your content or if they have any additional ideas we've already started with one poll there's more coming later on so stay tuned for those and then please do send in your feedback because that's very important for us as we're running the session as well um, the chat and questions is, of course, one of those ways. And depending on the type of session you're doing, as, as Julie mentioned earlier, you can even give the floor to some of your, your participants to speak or to contribute during the session. Um, you can also leverage social media. You don't have to restrict the, the session only to a specific tool or so. So really think about how you want to build it. And Julie's going to give you some tips on that later on, too. And of course, all the other materials that um, that you can share, presentation slides, documents, links, all that is also very, very, very useful. And whatever you end up using, check if it's working, ask for some feedback, do some surveys and evaluation and uh, adapt um, based on the feedback you're getting from your participants. Um, now, for you as a speaker or anyone who's going to be on camera, before you go live, take one good look in the mirror and check if you're ready. As they say, the camera doesn't lie and you certainly want to be the best <laughs> version of yourself you can when you when you go go live. So um, we have a few tips for for how to how to dress and uh, what to do about makeup and so on. Um, but overall, um, make sure that the colors you wear are, are good for camera. Make sure that uh, the textures are kind of smooth and sleek. Um, comb your hair, maybe make sure that your haircut is looking nice. And uh, use maybe a little bit of makeup or powder or so to make sure that you're not uh, all too shiny. Uh, not to take too much attention away from the, from the content of your presentations. 
Um, just to give you a couple of uh, examples of what maybe not to wear if you are going to be on camera. Um, avoid any big graphic prints or uh, shapes or stripes. Uh, don't go for white or black. They generally don't work very well. Don't wear anything that is way too open and or way too big or, or too small for you. Also avoid anything that has text or prints on it because you want people to focus on the content of your presentation or videos, not so much on, on trying to decipher what might be written on your shirt. Um, much better is if you go for um, somewhat bright colors, give it a little bit of color, um, smooth textures, um, some sort of outfit that could work in any kind of weather or any kind of season. You never know, especially if your session is being recorded. People might watch it in the summer and you might be wearing winter, winter clothes or vice versa and it might look a little bit weird on camera. So um, clear, sleek colors, uh, either something very neutral or, or just to give, you, give it a little bit of pop, go maybe for, for blue, green or so on. Um, test it, see how it looks and uh, adapted based on what you see on your screen when you turn the camera on, but test it in advance just to be sure. Um, when it comes to your hair, uh, our face, avoid any, any very extensive accessories. Don't go for hanging earrings or necklaces. Uh, avoid makeup that would be too strong because very often you're going to be mic'd and you don't want the, the jewelry to hit the microphones and cause distractions and so on. Same thing with the hair and makeup. You don't want anything that would kind of be accentuated too much on camera. So try to keep it neutral, toned down, but still polished enough and uh, presentable. Um, that's the quick overview of uh, how to get ready to go live. Um, I'm going to go back to Irma once again and see if we have any more questions. Thank you, Mia, for this great overview. We definitely have questions. And indeed, it's Bresnik uh, who is asking, who is telling us that at the end of the month, uh, they are planning to uh, to have a, a thematic seminar using GoToMeeting tool. And they also want to record and afterwards use some parts of this, uh, of this recording for communication purposes. Is there any tips you can uh, share with the we, you could share because we indeed as interact europe very often we record our webinars and afterwards uh what we do how we uh how we use it in different purposes yes uh, i think we're going to talk a little bit more about this a bit later on but but it's a very good idea first of all recording your session is, is, even if you're doing it live is very very good because very often people might have to leave in the middle they can't follow you until the very end so making it available afterwards is definitely very very useful um, that being said if it's a long session you can indeed chop it up to smaller pieces and you can repurpose a lot of that content you can use it for your for your website you can turn it into articles you can uh, extract short clips out of it, 30 seconds, one minute uh, quotes or so on, and use those in social media or elsewhere. Um, you can do quote cards, uh, you can pick some highlights from the presentation, some key messages or conclusions. Uh, there's many ways to use the content. content. So uh, it might be a good idea to think about it a little bit in advance, what type of content you might need later on. Is there maybe something you need to do in addition to what is happening on the screen? Make use of the fact that you are recording content, any kind of additional commentary or so on. So, so if you are planning to record, make sure that you kind of plan ahead and uh, and get ready for it as well, because it's much easier to kind of pick the bits you want once you have your recording instead of starting to go through all the footage that you have and, and trying to figure out what you might be able to do with it. So, so plan ahead. That would be my tip. Great, Mia. And I also liked very much a question from uh, Fernando. He was asking, mm -hmm. uh, imagine the situation that there is an online meeting, several organizations are connected. And in this meeting, there are several people from the same organization. Would you advise them to sit in front of one computer and talk with the others or that everyone in this organization would be sitting in front of, uh, let's say, individual computer? Do we have any tips? Uh, it depends. It depends. 
We generally, when we do webinars or sessions in our office, we try to be together as a team and just uh, shift between the speakers on one camera and on one device. But especially if the situation requires, or if you're if you're required to be in different locations, you can certainly divide that as well. So I don't think there is a standard answer as such. It really depends on how you want to run your session and what kind of fits your needs. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mia, for uh, um, for this overview and answering the questions. I think we are ready now to get uh, connected again with Julie, uh, who will uh, then uh, talk about uh, how to make uh, the presentations interactive and uh, how uh, how to make I mean your slides interesting and your presentations interactive. Julie, are you with us? We cannot hear you, Julie. Oh, yes. So, yes, I right. am here. I was um, having some slight technical difficulties, but this thing's happened. Show must go on. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm here to Great. talk about um, your presentations, how to make them uh, beautiful, how to make them exciting, and also um, a little bit about social media and how to do some uh, online engagement, but outside of your, uh, your online meeting or webinar tool. So let's start with the presentations. Um, to create beautiful presentations, why would you need to do that? Well, basically, uh, so that your audience has something interesting to look at. If they're just looking at a screen like this, just text uh, without any pictures, it's a bit boring. Um, so ironically, the, the um, slide about making a beautiful presentation isn't beautiful in itself. Is that, did we do that on purpose? I think we did. So, to make your presentation a little bit beautiful, I would say be consistent with the style that you use. So you'll notice that our presentations generally have this bar at the bottom of the screen, this colored bar, and we always have the icon, um, we always have the icon um, at the top of the corner. Also, um, use beautiful visuals, so use pictures and less text. Um, again, you want your audience to be listening to you, not trying to read what's on the slide, because um, that would be distracting. Use a lot of slides, um, so be more is better. And the reason for that is basically because it creates movement in your presentation. So what the audience sees is constantly changing. Um, and this keeps them awake, basically. It keeps them interested. Also, the idea is generally to take your audience on a journey by talking about the slides rather than um, reading them. Some tips to remember. Uh, you should not spend more than two minutes per slide. Again, it's about movement. It's uh, about keeping your audience engaged. You can be Julie? the best presenter in the world, yes? Just my role as the presenter to inform you that Ooh. participants cannot see your presentation. <sighs> There we go. Thank you. I was very <laughs> well. There you go. As Mia was saying, things can go wrong, right? So, can you see my presentation now? Yes. Yes, you can. Perfect. Thank you for letting me know, and um, and we shall keep going. So, tips to remember: don't spend more than two minutes per slide. It's about movement. It's about creating uh, engagement and entertainment. Don't have more than seven points for each slide. Again, it's too much content. People will be bored. Um, and don't put more than seven, um, seven words per point either. Use visuals instead. These are two examples um, of a bad slide on your left and a good slide on your right. Can you guess why? Um, well, the slide on your left has a lot of text. The way it's presented is quite um, confusing. Now, try to read what's on the slide on the left while I'm speaking to you. Can you focus? I know I couldn't. So basically, um, there's too much text, it's confusing, and you're just not going to be getting your message across. So instead, you want to do uh, more like an image on the right. So there's very little text. It's a good visual. There's 
a strong message there and it's something that you're likely to remember. Now, now that we've done the presentations, let's talk about communication. Um, you want to communicate about your event or else people won't know what's happening. Simple. So depending on the type of event you're doing, if you're doing an online meeting or a webinar or even a larger meeting, you will use the different channels that you have available to you. Uh, for example, your newsletter, social media, your website, uh, any emails. And the amount of communication you do about the event will really depend on the type of event. So if it's a small meeting of 25 people, you're likely to do less communication about it than you are if it was, say, a large webinar where you're uh, welcoming 400 people. Um, if you're using social media and it's a large event, uh, you may want to think about creating a hashtag that's unique to you that you can use um, on all your posts. And that brings all the information about the event together in one place and people can find um, what they're looking for. Don't forget to send a few reminders. Um, and especially for online events like webinars um, or larger online events, really focus on 24 hour period before the event launches. Um, online events are a bit different than physical events. There's less planning. People don't have to book hotels. They don't have to book trains. Um, so they generally wait till the last minute um, un uh, until they can see um, or to see if they have time to join your event. And that's when they will register. So for example, this event, um, at 8 p.m. last night, we had 300 participants. When we came back this morning, we had 400 people that were registered. So quite a difference. A lot of people will wait till the last minute. So that communication 24 hours beforehand is really key. During the event, um, it is a really interesting and, and fun idea to use social media to communicate about what's going on. So there's a lot of interaction going on in the tool, in the webinar itself, um, but you can also create a conversation outside of, um, of the actual webinar itself so that people who aren't necessarily joined in uh, can still join into the conversation. Now, again, uh, depending on the type of online event you're doing and the scope of it, you will you know, you will adjust the amount of social media you do. So if you're doing a, an online meeting with 25 people, you don't want to go crazy doing social media because honestly, you know, um, you don't need to be, uh, you don't need to create such a big conversation. Most people are in the meeting. There's th things to get through. You have to have results at the end of that meeting. So generally people take one or two pictures, they put them on social media and, and they use those pictures as well for articles at the end uh, afterwards. But if you're doing a larger webinar like this one, or even more important, a big event, um, then social media really is your friend. Remember, social media is about creating a conversation. Uh, it's about bringing people with the same interests together so that they can talk and exchange. And if it's done well, it's it's quite nice. I mean, I know we all have to deal with trolls, but Generally, social media is a good thing. So you can do different things. Uh, shout out to your followers. Speaking of, if you're watching this webinar, take a selfie, post it on social media. We want to know. And if you do that shout out and people do respond, then it's your duty um, to reply to every post you get. And not just with a like or a retweet, really welcome them, make them feel part of the conversation. Um, again, this is what social media for. It's, it's in the words, social. Um, use, diff use different tools available to you. All these social media platforms have stories, they have uh, videos, um, all they have things like Facebook Live or Twitter Live. This is a way you can do, you know, for example, you could um, go around, uh, a heritage site and do a Facebook Live, and then you get much more interaction. Also, have a look at the different tools on your phone. A lot of newer models these days um, have fun little things you can do with video, slow motion, fast motion, you can draw on some of the pictures. Uh, have a look at what your phone can do. It's um, 
you know, it can be fun to play around with the different options available to you. Really, really let your creativity out. Finally, after the event, you also need to communicate about what happened because not everyone was there. Not everyone could stay for the whole thing. Um, and some and the people who were there might want to refer back to some of the things you said. So publish an article on your website um, with the main points and some of the Q&A materials. Uh, make sure that the recording for the webinar is available for people to watch again. Um, you could publish things like the poll results or any speaker quotes. Um, put the pictures you took on social media. Uh, you could also do a tip sheet that summarizes the main points uh, and to take home with you and also um, do promote any reference materials that were created. So, for example, in some of your meetings, you create uh, methodologies on how to assess good practices. These are good things to share because other people will be looking um, for that information. So basically, in a nutshell, that is how to put together a good presentation and how to communicate about your event. Um, Irma, it's up to you, up uh, to you. Great, uh, Julie, uh, there is one question from uh, Tess indeed. He is wondering if we have any tips on how to insert video in the webinar. And maybe you can also tell to everyone why we as organizers decided not to use any pre-recorded uh, videos in this webinar today. Um, well, so a lot of the, the how to include videos will depend on the tool you're using, but oftentimes uh, you can upload the video into the tool beforehand and then on the side there will be a drop down menu that allows you to select it and play. Um, so again, it will def def depend on the tool. Uh, and why didn't we uh, choose re recording? Because we wanted to test out the scenario of having different people in different areas, uh, in different parts of the country, in different parts of the world, uh, to show you that it is actually possible to deliver uh, a, a webinar uh, in, in, this current, in this current environment. And uh, indeed, uh, Interreg Europe as the program, uh, you probably uh, remember that uh, when we organized the, the trainings to train the project partners on how to uh, write the project or prepare the project application, we as the program use a lot of pre-recorded content because we do a cycles. So it's really easy to do to record once and then to reuse it material several times because we uh, repeat uh, the the topic or, or the webinar. So this is indeed something you can think in case you have repetitive uh, events and you uh, plan to, uh, to, let's say, to do, to, to stream uh, the same content several, several times. Um, great. Uh, I think, Julie, then we will move forward. And now I know that you will talk about, you will summarize in five steps on um, how to prepare a good webinar, right? Yes, yes. Just to give a summary uh, to everything we've heard so far. Um, so the five steps to design a good webinar, formulate your three key messages, make a simple storyboard, a simple script. Once you've put your script together, once you've put uh, what you, together what you're going to say, ask yourself if this is relevant, if people will find it useful. Ask yourself, so what? Why should I care? Um, and then write a magical introduction uh, that will get people hooked and then design key interactions for uh, your audience, polls, quizzes, chats, um, and some social media things. And when you're uh, designing a good webinar, you have to remember that content is king. You could have gone to the hairdressers or the barber the day before and your beard and your hair look awesome, your clothes, you just bought some designer clothes and you look fabulous, your presentations uh, have been designed by a professional, but if your content isn't good, isn't relevant, isn't useful, then no one cares. It's not, content is king in this. People are there to watch the content as well. 
you have to be engaging, have an engaging format. So again, interactions, 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 make your audience part of the event. Um, you want to have energetic and positive presenters. The last thing you want is someone talking for an hour on the same tone, just not very interesting to watch or to listen to. Um, the tool that you use, the tool that you choose, should be easy to use. It should be easy to join for your uh, participants. Um, make sure that the light in the background is good, that the audio works and the video works. Um, and more importantly, make sure that what you've designed is made for the audience because um, you're doing it for them. Right, and that's it from me. Uh, Irma, I think we can't hear you at the moment. Thank you. Uh, I was saying to, uh, that we have a question from Karen and she was asking us what tool do we use to create uh, a sticky note storyboard, indeed the planning for our webinar. I thought I would ask uh, Julie, but as you are there, me, I think you are also able to answer this question. <laughs> Storyboards, eh? Um, well, this goes into the planning. So really go, what we do is kind of a minute by minute schedule, but you could as well do it as a storyboard, especially if you're working with several different um, speakers and different shots or different locations. Uh, it, it is a good idea to kind of map it out and, uh, and really kind of see how it would play out once you, once you get to it. Yeah, I saw also that Evelyn was challenging me as Julie was talking that there should be a magic introduction. Evelyn was asking, so what was this magic sentence in my introduction? Indeed, this morning I aimed to open a little bit to share our backstage and to tell you that we also had some challenges to manage this uh, webinar, which is totally online about the online meetings and I hope uh, it, uh, it worked. Uh, great, Mia. I also see that from the questions we have received so far, everyone is impatiently waiting for the last, uh, the last, the last, the last uh, uh, topic we would cover about the tools and interaction. Laura, Anna, we're already asking: Do you ha do we have a magic list, maybe, where they could see uh, what tools are available in the market? So I give you the floor, and I hope that uh, this magic is in your hands now. All right. Thank you, Irma. Let's go to the last part of today's presentation. And it's true. I've also seen all those questions about tools coming in. And we also received quite a few before this session. So I, I know that this is something that everyone really wants to know about. Um, before we get to it, I just want to echo what Julie said about the selfies and letting us know where you're following us from. I just want to give a quick shout out to Patrick and Erna. So I was checking our Twitter and I, I saw that you already started posting some pictures. Keep sending those in because, you know, we're all sitting alone here in our little apartments and we want to see where you're following us from. So please do share a picture. Um, now then, back to the tools. Um, I hope I'm not going to disappoint you because we're not going to run through a whole set of different tools in, in a great detail. But what we want to give you is an outline of what you need to do an online event or an online meeting. The basic setup is not very complicated. You need to have an internet connection, obviously, hopefully a stable one. So a cable would be recommended. But at the moment, we are also running quite a few of our, our sessions on Wi-Fi, and it seems to be working quite well. But a cable connection would be preferable. You need some sort of device that will connect you to the rest of the world. It can be your laptop. It can be your phone. As Julie said, you have a lot of power in your pocket. Just, you know, worst case scenario, grab up your phone and use that um, or use your computer. Um, ideally, you would also need a camera and a microphone. We had a question about headsets earlier on, and it would indeed be better to not use the, the camera and the, the microphone you have in your computer because there might be a little bit of echo or the sound might not be the best. So if possible, an external microphone would be better. And of course, with the camera, you can also kind of upgrade that to a better quality one. But uh, just to let you know, we are also doing this with our office computers and with our um, 
own headphones and so on. So it's doable, it's doable. Then you also want to think about the light. Ideally, I'm going to show you how our studio normally works. You should think about a light. You want to be able to see the speakers or whoever appears on the screen or whatever appears on the screen. But uh, doing it in a place with an enough daylight is also an option. Um, as a starting point, I mean, you need a few ba basic things, but once you've got those, you can start testing, trying it out, and then upgrade if and when necessary. So you don't need to go for the very high-tech solution at first. Just give it a go, see if it works, and then upgrade based on your real needs. Um, quite a few of our projects have actually already started doing this and are doing it on a regular basis. So to get started, especially for meetings and, and, and um, smaller discussions, you don't need that much. Uh, people use Skype or you can use Zoom or you can use other tools like WebEx or GoToWebinar as we're doing now for your own meetings or you can use Microsoft Teams or other, other online call services. Um, so all you need to do is bring people together use the camera if possible because it's always nicer to see who you're talking to that helps in creating the connection and just uh, give it a go. Um, I'm going to take you behind the scenes to our studio. As we've been saying today, I mean, this one, this session is brought to you from all of our homes because of the current situation. But normally when we work in the office, we do have a little studio set up for our webinars. And you see basically the same basic tools that I just mentioned. We have some extra lights. We have our computer, we have a camera, we have the connection, we have the speakers in front of it. So everything is kind of nicely set up so that you have a place where you know that the basics are right and you can focus on your presentation. Um, here you see it from the other side. I mean, there is a little bit of tech here and there. You have your camera, you have some additional screens and uh, all the extra lights and all that. But really, it doesn't have to be very complicated, especially for, for meetings and webinars. Um, it's more for bigger events when you then start needing a little bit of extra equipment. Um, as we've been saying, it is a team effort and there's really more people normally in our webinar studio than just those who are presenting. We have an organizer controlling the computer, we have somebody or even more than one person going through the chat and the questions and typing in answers, helping people with technical issues, making sure that things run smoothly behind the scenes. And as we've said several times today, that is very, very important. Um, then when you start thinking about bigger events, well, sky is the limit. And this is also where we kind of run out of capacity and equipment. So we very often work with specialists and additional tech providers or, or service providers to, to do it because you will need bigger screens, you will need more switchboards, you will need more equipment, you'll need a nicer studio setup and so on. And it's all doable and there are people who can help you to do that. So you don't need to be able to do everything yourself. You need to know what you need and you need to know what you want to do. And this also brings me to the tools. Um, we're not going to recommend any single tool for you to do your sessions, webinars, meetings or so on. And I hope I'm not disappointing too many of you by saying that. But what, what we would encourage you to do is to really think about what you need. Why are you doing this meeting? How do you want to do it? And what do you need to do it? How many participants are you going to have? Is it going to be a small meeting? Is it going to be a web stream? Do you have a lot of audience? Do you want to keep it closed? Just have it invitation only? Is it going to be open? Do you want to have it web streamed, open for anyone to access? Does there have to be registration? How do people, um, do they sign up or just show up on the day? Or how does it work? Um, are you going to do it live? Is it going to be recorded? Uh, what kind of additional features do you need? Are you going to play some videos in that session? What kind of audience interaction do you want to do? Do you want to run some polls? Do you want people to be able to submit questions? Do they need to be able to speak? How do you want to interact with them? Um, this doesn't all need to be in one platform. In, in fact, I mean, there are some services that are kind of all in one um, services, but they might not meet your needs. You might need to complement those with a few additional um, apps or extra features. Um, where are you going to do it? Is it going to be in one place? Do you have a fixed studio? Does it have to be mobile? Are people going to connect from different places? These are the questions you need to answer first. And you need to kind of know what you want and then start looking for the tool. That being said, 
we know that uh, quite a few of our projects are active with online activities and they are using a whole bunch of different tools and we've been asking um, our project partners to share their ideas with us and we've collected quite a few of those in a, in a little online file that uh, we're making available to all of you to have a look at i mean you'll see some basic basic tools that most of you probably know like really skype or webex or google hangouts or microsoft teams and so on but there's also some other tools that you might be less familiar with with. And of course, there are the big tools that everyone knows. A lot of people by now, especially you might have already been in a Zoom meeting or two, or you might have been in a go to webinar meetings, uh, you might be using Teams on a regular basis. Um, use your experience. Are those tools working for you? Do they provide the services you need, the features you need, or do you need something else? I mean, the world is full of options and this is a very fast developing field. So even if we did recommend uh, one or two tools for you by next week or next month, they might be outdated already because there's more um, innovative features coming out as we speak. Also right now, a lot of these tools, even if they are paid, they offer maybe a free trial or a service. So now is a good time to test and see what works for you. But really think about what you need and uh, build it based on that. Um, that brings us to the end of our presentation and we've al already also gone past our one hour mark. So um, I'm going to throw the ball back to you, Irma, to see if we have any additional questions. Yes, Mia, we do have questions, but before we take them on board, I will ask Petra to launch a poll to check if after the presentations we have given, um, our uh, webinar participants are thinking that they can run at least some of their uh, events online. So uh, make your mind and let us know if you think that you could run some of your uh, events online yes, no, or you don't know, you are still uh, thinking. Um, I guess everyone now is submitting the answers. And in the meantime, Mia, I will, uh, I will just ask you one question because uh, some participants were wondering, they were saying you don't use the headset, but they can hear you very, very well. How comes? <laughs> I'm going to answer that as soon as we are done with the poll and, and uh, you'll see me again, because even though you don't see it, I am actually using a headset. <laughs> Voila! Okay, great. We will uh, discovering this secret then in a minute. Okay, I think you finished to to submit your answer. Then let's uh, let's check uh, what answers we got. Uh, yes. Uh, we see that um, most of you, 88% of you, think that they could organize uh, some events online. I think this is this is really really great for us to know that, and we hope that uh, uh, you got uh, some uh, tips on how to do uh, how to do uh, from us. So Mia, now you should uh, show us where is this head. <laughs> microphone. I will, I will, I will. Behind the scenes is the best stuff. But I'm also very happy to see that nobody said no. Did I see correctly? Zero yes, percent said no. Exactly. So everyone can do at least something online. That's great. Um, well, here we go. Ta -da. I am mic'd up. I just uh, yeah. tried to find it. But yeah, no, I am using a headset. I'm using an extra extra microphone too. Um, yeah. yeah. And just for everyone also to know that yesterday we had a rehearsal for this webinar. So we were all connected and we checked that uh, uh, we also had few uh, participants from our team joining the webinar to make sure that everyone can hear us well. So we tested our equipment and also set up so that you can see around uh, that everything is fine in terms of uh, uh, the light. Even if today it's uh, nothing magic, we don't have big light, it's all natural. Light. We are all at our homes, but still we uh, tried to make it as professional as, as possible using uh, like minimum uh, what we have uh, today. Um, uh, Mia, there were several yeah. questions indeed about uh, interactivity. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any tools uh, you would have in mind that would be use useful for, um, for, for our participants to know in terms of ensuring interactivity during the webinars beyond the social media? Um, 
I want to start by saying that I think the tool is less important than the fact that you really plan in the audience interaction. I mean, the tool is kind of secondary. You have to make sure that you leave time and you find ways to bring the audience in. It doesn't even have to be super complicated. You just make sure that you have time for questions and answers and you check what people are saying. Um, for example, on GoToWebinar, you can, you can ask people to raise hands just to show that they're kind of still on board with you, just to signal that uh, they understand what you're saying. Um, but of course, I mean, in the same list of tools that was just linked to the chat and that we just had on the slide, we do have some tools for interaction as well. So if you want to um, if you want to build in more fun elements, there's there's things that make you play against each other in a quiz or, or a competition or um, you can do different types of uh, joint activities elsewhere. You can use uh, apps like Slido for upvoting questions, really giving people not the chance only to ask questions, but also see what others are asking and react to that. So, so um, you, there are many, many different tools available. It's more about what kind of interaction is relevant and useful for the session that you plan to do. Yeah, uh, indeed, uh, it's uh, Thomas, Beata, Marin that are addressing the same question. And also, um, you saw that during her presentation, Mia was showing the table about the um, online tools that could be used uh, for the meetings. This table, um, there are more categories. It's not only about uh, the tools you can use for online meetings. We also cover some tools that could be used for online collaboration and also some tools you could use to make your presentations interactive, several because in the market there are several tools to add the polls, uh, where you can get uh, the answers from the audience instantly and integrate in your slides. Um, some tools you might choose for your meetings would have it in the system. Uh, for some other cases, you might use the external tool. So our advice would be really that you check this table, uh, as there it's already like the list uh, of the tools with some. Uh, um, with the links and also some basic description, descriptions about each of the tool and, and some indications how much it costs or it's for free. And then you can uh, decide what tool uh, might be interesting uh, for you uh, to take on board. Yeah, Great. and just uh, adding to that really quickly, I mean, this is an open document and we know that we all kind of have our own favorite tools, but it would be if you are already using a specific tool that you like a lot, um, please do add that to the table, especially if you are working in an interregular project. I mean, this is something that we can all, all learn from each other from. Um, so let's just share these experiences also amongst ourselves. Yeah, and thank you especially for Daniel who joined uh, the webinar and he sent us the link of uh, also of another table and overview of the different uh, tools which we'll be eager also to share with you. Uh, great, Mia. I am picking up then the last uh, questions. Uh, Melanie is asking, if a webinar is scheduled for two hours or more, uh, do you recommend to include a short break or just to pause uh, that everyone uh, maybe get some fresh air, grabs a, a cup of coffee and uh, then uh, can be back uh, to follow up uh, with the meeting? What do you think about this? Um, two hours is getting a little bit long. I would also be a little bit wary about planning a break mid-session because anyone who's ever been in an in-person event knows that breaks very easily extend and it's hard to get people back in the room even when you're in the same space with them. If you're doing it online and you tell people, okay, switch off for 10-15 minutes and let's be back at, at, in, in 15 minutes, um, who's there to force them to come back? So. So a break could be a little bit risky. I would maybe rather rethink um, the structure and the format, see if you can maybe squeeze down the timing a little bit, uh, keep people really engaged for about an hour, hour and a half, and then try to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Mia, for the answer to this question. I see that Jan and many others also are thanking for us to organize this webinar and they say that they got a lot of useful information um, that would be very helpful to them uh, to organize the future meetings. I think those are great, great, great uh, news for us. So uh, thank you, Mia, for this.
to explain us. And um, I think we are ready, as almost all questions are answered, we are almost ready to close our, our, uh, our webinar. Uh, except uh, before doing that, uh, we will uh, ask you uh, to answer to the last question we have, we have uh, uh, prepared for you, uh, to see if you would like to have a follow-up webinar or online events. Do you think we should organize a follow-up webinar on online events? Um, and there are a few answers we propose, yes. And uh, yes, you would like, and you could share a relevant experience. It means maybe you already organized, you are eager to be a presenter and share this experience with the others. You could also say, yes, I would like a follow-up webinar and you would like to learn from others more, so to be more as the participant, or you could choose no, saying that you don't think we need a follow-up webinar or online events. So I'm very, very eager to know what are the results, uh, what would be the results um, to this question. Great, I think you have selected your answers already and we are eager to see on the screen what are the results. Yes, we see that 5% of you say, uh, no, indeed it's 94% uh, who would like to have a follow-up webinar or online events, and uh, uh, six say no, so probably we would organize one, and uh, most of you are eager to learn from the others, but there are also 5% of you who are uh, eager to share the relevant experience. And for those indeed, my special offer sounds as following. After this webinar, you will receive an evaluation form. And in this form, we will be asking uh, on what aspects you would like we organize a follow-up webinar. Maybe there is a topic we discussed today and you would like that we cover it in more details, or maybe there is a topic we didn't cover today and you would like that we, uh, that we cover it in the webinar. So don't hesitate to indicate uh, the topic so that we would know on uh, what uh, aspect of the online events we should follow up. And for the ones who say that they have experience and would be eager to share with the others, don't hesitate to leave us a short message and we will be in touch then uh, with you uh, to follow up on this and invite you and we'll see uh, uh, maybe uh, next time it will be you presenting your experience in one of the webinars. It's really, really great um, that you were all with us. I see that um, more than 300 people are still today now uh, with me. And it's really great. It was really great for us to see uh, that you were so active and you answered uh, and you asked so, so many questions. Uh, but other than that, I would like uh, to wish you to uh, stay safe, to so that you, uh, you that you stay uh, safe, that you stay in touch uh, with the others, and you organize great meetings online. So thanks a lot for being with us today, and uh, and be motivated to keep your interactions and organize the online meetings. Bye bye.